Hey everybody, what's going on? Let everybody get in here real quick. Take the regular background off. You guys can see my house. I figured out what I did wrong to my computer, guys, last week. I was all over uh, Paul and everybody. of like something's wrong with my indicator, and it was all me. I deleted some stuff off, uh, so it wouldn't show up on my screen for some other things, and uh, it, I ended up taking it off. Uh, that's what took the bar count off last week. Right. All right, what things do you guys, before I get started tonight, what things do you guys want to see tonight? I'm going over Elliott Wave, like beginning to end, and I'm going to go through, we're going to start with a blank chart. I'm going to put everything, all the indicators on there, and then I'm going to go through, uh, we are going to use the... Uh, 5k club levels we're going to put those in and then look at some trades and and to throw me off I'm going to pick one on here that I don't normally trade so it'll be totally fresh all right can everybody hear me okay All right, there's one, okay. Bill, Juan, Richard, Joel, I see you on there. Dave, the Raptor man. Mark, Mark and Mark, appreciate it. All right, guys, let's get uh, rock and rolling on this. Let's share my screen. And we are going to do... Hide that one. Should. All right. It's not liking me tonight. Desktop two. There we go. All right. Can you guys see on desktop two? Can you see my? Um, trading view screen. Where did my the joy of having three monitors? Everything disappears on you. I cannot see anybody's comments. All right, put that one away. That's not what I wanted. There's the, there's the button up there. Chat, there we go. Yes, 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 and yes. All right, so let me try this again. Google. All right, let me try this again. Can you all see my um, trading view chart with nothing on there but just the plain chart? All 
All right. Sure again. How about now? God darn it, when I share that other monitor, I lose it. Yes, okay, cool. All right. If for some reason you can't see me, you, the, you guys that have my number, text me. Uh, all right, so here we go. I am going in TradingView, if you started a new um, screen, this is what you're going to get. Typically, it has the volume on it down there automatically. I am going to take that off for now, just hide it. That's one thing I do love about TradingView is you can turn indicators on and off without having to delete them off your uh, report. So we're going to pick something tonight that I don't normally trade. Let's do... Let's do the Dow. Let's do YM. Because I don't trade that one. Do you guys want to do YM or do you want to stick with ES? ES? It's about the only one I trade. So, all right, we'll stick with ES. Let's go. All right. I put my glasses on so I can see these levels. All right, we are currently at 27.66. So we, I'm gonna go up to, I'm gonna go up to 29.09.50. We're gonna put in the first level of, and it's called a price range. It's on the left hand side of your screen right here. It typically will have this long position picked out already, go down to price range. And then when you drop it, it is, I, I don't even try to like get it perfectly straight. I just draw it, drop it. And let me change this real quick to MB5T zones. I like them blue. I just drop it, right click it, and then do this coordinates on it. So this one, if you guys have your, and let me show you, let's see. This is what I'm looking at right here, is that this is the 5K club. Your, this is Paul's support and resistance zones. So you have ES, and I'm going down here. I'm gonna start at like 29, 77.97. I'm going to put in a, uh, a couple levels down here um, just above and below where we're at right now just so you guys can get a feel of where we're at. Okay, so let me move this back over here. And make sure that I didn't miss any questions. Okay, so the first one we're going to do we're at 54. I'm going to go to 77. I don't think we need to go any higher than that. 29.77 is the top one. The bottom one is 29.72. 25. Let me make sure I have it. Yeah, visibility is on all charts. All right. Make sure you right click and lock that puppy because if not, later on, you get these on here and you go to drag your screen around and you drag it off and then you're like, you have no idea which one you drug off. So there's one there. Let me mark this off so I know where I'm at. 29.77. And the, the nice thing about this, guys, if you have, and gals, if you have this chart, when Paul puts it out on Sunday, anything that's new is in yellow. So if I look at my ES chart and I go down here, there ain't nothing new. So when Sunday rolled around, guess what? You weren't doing anything. Now, uh, there's orange is temporary. So these were two new ones that you added on there. That, that's it. If that was all you traded was ES. Now, if you traded YM, you go down, there's a new one, just ones. So once you put these on your chart and you save them, 
you don't have to keep redrawing them every single week. So this is very quick on Sundays to fly through it and put them on there. So you have the 2977. The next one's, um, put this over here. Next one is 29. Where is, there we go. Date range, and it should remember the last one, 2936. And like I said, I don't even look for it. I just drag, drop, right click, settings. 2936. Bottom number is 293275. Right click lock. And that one's locked up there. Then we're going to go next one is 290950. So I just click there, click, click, right click. Settings, 2909.50. Next one is 2906.75. Save, right click, lock. Cross these off. See how fast this is? Try doing this on another platform that quick. Settings, the next one is 2873.25. And the bottom number is 2867.75. The printer finally shut off. It's making a ton of noise. Make sure right click and lock it. And then we're going to go 2805.25. And what I'm going to do, guys, is I'm going to keep this chart on here. So, like, next week, if you guys reference something from last week, I'm going to save this on there. Daniels, that uh, you have – I have never seen an email from you at all, so uh, – send something to me on it. It does work on Forex. Uh, it helps if you read the, watch the training videos on it, on how to use it, that uh, you don't get in a plane and try to fly it without taking lessons first or practice on your simulator to make sure you figure it out. And some days, no indicators are going to, like today, no indicator is going to tell you what to do. Half the indicator said go long and half the indicator said go short. And a lot of people got chopped up today with and without indicators. So you're, it's not learning the hard way of what you spent on the indicator. It's learning the hard way in your lesson uh, to make it on this journey. So, and you're more welcome to stay and learn if you want to from it. That uh, I'm not mad at you. I'm just saying uh, just because you're mad, don't jump on here and try to rain on my parade uh, that's on here. All it's showing is that you're not following the rules. And that's what this class is for. I'm not here to cut you down or anything else. I'm here to help. And that's what these Wednesday classes are for. So if this is your first one joining, great. Uh, we can go through and keep on going. Um, where are we at? 2805.25. Next one, 2796. Ooh. I gotta try to squeeze this into an hour. Right click and lock. Did I do, I think I missed 2873.25. This is a nice thing on TradingView. If you click on the bar, it actually right over here will tell you what the top and the bottom bars are, uh, which is awesome. Uh, so we got the 2873, we got the 2805.25, and now we're going to go down to 2734. Oh. 
2734. Bottom number is 272925. 272925. And you lock it. We'll go, we're gonna go a couple more lower. 2688 and 2681 and the reason why there's no refunds on there is it's a digital license you can't refund it once that um, once that once it's been put in there and sent it's not something you can return it's it's yours for that length of time. That's why there's no refund on that. Let's see. And I would recommend going back and watching my roller coaster video from like two weeks ago. It's underneath the YouTube channel. Um, and I went through setting up your chart with eight charts to be able to watch all the different patterns. And I'm actually going to pull up my ES1 today where I got my ass handed to me. Um, but the picture was right in front of me. I was just trying to swear him down that it was going to do something else. Uh, myself, 2688, 2592. And the bottom number is 50. 25, 80, 50. I'm trying to get uh, where we have enough of these so that, oh, you guys didn't catch it. I forgot to lock the top one. Uh, let's see here. Do, 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 do. All right, let me do one more. 25, 50, 4, 50. Whenever we go back in time, I want to be able to go back and show you some examples of where these support and resistance zones came in handy. 2532.75. And lock. I think I locked that one. I did. Okay. And then let's go settings for the background. Yeah, there we go. I forgot to save this. Uh, on the background, take label background and just uncheck it. And then that way. That way it's not taking up your screen. Okay, and now, so we got these on there. You have your support resistance zones on there. Now we're going to go to your indicators, which is this FX. You're going to click it. You're going to go to invite only scripts, and here is all of your stuff. You're going to hit bits, bar number, bias, Elliott Wave Indicator Suite, Elliott Wave Oscillator, false breakout, and I'm going to put roller coaster on there too, even though we're focusing on Elliott Wave tonight. I am going to shrink this down. I'm going to take, shrink that down too. And then oscillator, I'm going to shrink it a little bit. We may play around with this one. Again. Get a little bit better size out of it. And if you notice, my bar count number is back uh, back in session. Uh, I, I'll tell you where I took it out of. It was indicator values. And what I was trying to do, if you look right here, I was trying to 
if these numbers off the screen, I was like, I don't care about those. I don't need those. Well, if you look, the bar count number goes away with that. So that's why they were not on there last week. All right. We are going to, let me make this screen size bigger. All right. Day time. We're going to go down to 15 minutes. I take this blue label off on bits, uncheck it, and it takes that label off where you can see better. Let's go ahead, let's hide bits for now. All right, here is the fifth wave move that hit today. Let me shut off roller coaster because it's kind of you can kind of see roller coaster picked the move up off the fifth wave back down on this. But let's shut it off here. This is a long, long, long one. Well, it's 15 minutes. Let's go down to five. Now I haven't isolated yet, so let's see where we're at. We had one here. Okay. This is one I probably would not have taken. And I'll tell you why. And it's because of this support and resistance zone area right in here. All right. So. Let's, uh, I'm not going to isolate on this one, uh, on this example right now. And that's just so that I can't, if I, my mouse will quit moving around, um, so that I can show you how to do this. All right, so on your fourth wave, you say you've isolated, and we'll go over that isolation here in just a minute. And questions? Done. Um, so once it paints the three, it's pulling back and it may go up, may go down. Now, if you didn't have Paul's support and resistance zone in here, you would not know when this thing cranks out of here, you wouldn't know to not take that. Now, did it work? Yes, that, uh, but I'll tell you why I wouldn't have taken it. But what we're going to do is we're going to draw a regression channel on the wave four pullback. Once it paints the number four, then you're going to go over here and you're going to click this top one where it says trend line. Go down to the bottom. It's regression trend. Now I have mine saved on here as a wave four pullback channel. So you go from the top of the three to the bottom of the four. And I need to extend then that to the right uh, here. There we go. Extend lines. Doesn't necessarily have to be that far out. All right. So you do not want to take your long until you're outside of that channel. Now, if you've watched my other videos for the uh, inputs, I do high, low, close divided by three on my regular channels, but on the fourth wave pullback, you want to leave it on close. That it makes it uh, a little bit fatter of a channel. Uh, let me show you. If I do my high, low, close divided by three, it shrinks it a little bit. Uh, it's not uh, it's not that much of a difference, but you want to do it on close. Uh, so you don't you don't want to take this until you're outside of that channel line, which this was uh, you're outside of your 6-4 moving average, which is that blue line right there. Let me just blow this up a little bit bigger. We came out of here. You cleared the box. You're outside of the channel. The 6-4 moving average, you're above it. You also, on your bias, has gone green. It was kind of yellow, red, yellow, red, yellow, red, boom. You had green on this candle right here, but you still don't take it yet. The next candle, you still had another green. That's when you would have taken it. 
Now, I wouldn't have taken this one because of this support and resistance zone right here. And if you look, look what happens. We came out, we tagged that box and it just bounces and bounces and bounces. And this is what, five minute candles. So 15, 20, 20, a half hour, it went sideways. We finally get one breakout candle, comes back again. Breaks out again, we pull back. Then it busts through and it almost hits the fifth wave target. And then look what happens here at the 8.30 open. <clears throat> Shoots all the way. Where, look, lo and behold, where does it go? Almost to the tick of Paul's support resistance zone. Then it takes off, does its thing. And if, if you guys look at this, man, all day long. I traded this morning from like six o'clock in the morning. So I got in around right here and I got chopped up in this area in here thinking that I was going to outsmart the system. Uh, it's that's why you don't trade into a supporter resistant zone. Now, one of the other things you're going to do is you're going to draw a Fibonacci retracement. Now, I have saved a risk to reward W5T. You just take it, touch the uh, either the bottom or the top of the, uh, I'd start at the bottom of it, uh, drag it down and then go to the right, drag that zero to the top of the green of the, and if you're going uh, short, you're just going to reverse that. You're going to touch it at the bottom of the blue. Say this was down here. You would touch down here and then drag it up to the bottom of the green, which would be on the bottom. And if you see on here, one to one is basically to the bottom of here. And then your 1.6 is up top. You won't. You want, I mean, it'd be nice to get 1.6 out of there, which it did do it, that uh, it hit some resistance and bounced around and almost stopped you back out again. Uh, came darn close to it. Uh, there's no way in hell I would have uh, stayed in a trade at 28.33 and let it come back down to 27.99. Uh, so that is why I would not have taken this trade on here because of the support and resistance zone. So reiterating, following the rules, this might have looked like a good trade and it did work out. Don't get me wrong, it did work. If you got in right here that, uh, and then had the patience to sit through this all the way, uh, I mean, that, that was a mess today uh, all the way. So that's why you would not take that one. All right, let's zoom back out and let's go to a, let's go to a different time frame. Let's go down to a three minute. And I need to delete that and delete that. Yeah, let's go to 15 and go a little bit higher time frame. And where are we on here? This was a very small one. I haven't isolated. Let's isolate. It's 15 minutes. You usually want to go to the higher low of yesterday. So this is going to be somewhere right around in here, 1445. Uh, and that, if you look right here, W5T bar count number, you're going to go there, hover over it, and it is bar 10,387. So you're going to go to your Elliott wave, click your sprocket, inputs 10,387. Click OK. Takes about five seconds, seven seconds for it to live. Didn't change it much, change it just a hair uh, that's on here. And if you look, let me blow this up. There were actually several Elliott ways in here. Here's one that started out that failed, never got there. 
here's one that worked out hit its fifth wave target which happened to be and this is another one you would not have taken in this let me see if i can shrink this down i wouldn't have taken this one because coming out of there is going straight into a support and resistance zone don't want to be there. And that is basically this morning that uh, they, this is the exact same exact same time. This was the fourth wave pullback uh, is what it sounds like. I think that, yeah, that was the fourth wave pullback um, going in there and then coming back out. You just don't want to be in there. This is too close. Like from here to here, you don't want that. But let's do the FIB deal just to be on the safe side. Here's your target. Go, there's just not enough. Uh, right there, let me move it out to the side so you can see it. I mean, it hit it, uh, but I would not take that going into that zone. Now it turned into a, now we were below the six, four moving average, which uh, was good. Your bias was lined up. Uh, kind, the only thing though is look how choppy this was. Red, yellow, red, green, red, yellow, red, green. It, I like solid ones like this. Red, 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 all the way across. This little pullback popped off one yellow, red, red, red going down and that that one was uh that was a pretty decent one there so let's draw now this the way for pullback is not huge on this one which typically on your way for pullback paul likes to see seven to ten candles that those are you tend to be the strongest elliott waves when they do is seven to ten and if you look at this one it's uh three candles so let's do wait for pull back here's your number four or your three to your number four we're gonna extend it to the right if I can click on it right and extend lines all right so you don't want to get out of this thing you don't want to go short until you're outside of this candle right here now we still have the red now let's pull this up a little bit. I need to get your Yeah, and see look, we didn't get a crown. You want that um that green crown for that pullback and we just never got it. It was just red the whole way. So that's a this is a one of those uh bias i think uh bias i think is part of bits if i recall right i have all of them to be honest with you i i can't remember uh Juan, i think it's part of i'm pretty sure it's part of bits that's on there uh, so we didn't have a nice crown like this right here. And that, that is what you want. Let's go back. Let's see if we can find a nut. Uh, that one was, well, we, uh, isolated, so we're not going to have one in the past. So th there's a reason of why not to take this trade today. So, uh, I did, I wasn't looking at 15 minute chart and I didn't isolate this thing and do it like this. And guess what? I probably would have saved myself the 400 some dollars that I lost because I wouldn't have been, I would have, wouldn't have taken this trade if I would have seen this right here. I was on some different time frames, and this is telling me, all right, here we, you go through your checklist that, you know, did the wave two retracement. Uh, here's one, two, three, four. And you have, um, did the wave two retrace further back than wave one? No, that uh, wave 
wave four did not go lower than or higher than wave one. So we're good there. But coming out of this, there's not enough risk to reward. So we click that Fibonacci again, go down here and click the blue. We're gonna go off to the side so we can see, click the green. One to one, I mean, that's not bad. Uh, you'd like to see 1.6, which 1.6 took you down to the resistant zone down here. We didn't even get close to it yet. Um, for me, I, there's just not enough room when you get outside of this channel between here, which is 27.52 and 27.49. Four points on a 15 minute chart. That's not enough for me. That's too much risk in my part. All right, Juan, great. Uh, too much risk for just a little bit of reward. I mean, that's only uh, three, 12 ticks. Um, not enough, you know what I mean? It could easily go the wrong way, which it did. If you look at it, if you stayed in it, it came back, it would have put you negative. Now, it, it barely, you just don't want to get in it. You're just sideways uh, going on there. So now, I mean, and this is one of the things that a lot of people will sell you some kind of an indicator or something else that, you know, oh, it's the greatest thing since sliced bread. Yes, when the market is doing certain things, that indicator is going to be great. But the market is there to take your money. It's not there, you know, it's not a casino where it's like everybody wins, everybody gets a free check for just showing up, uh, you know. There's no safe space in trading that the market is there to take every penny away from you that it can take from you. And it will, if you let it. Yeah. I mean, and that's the only thing you guys have control over. Um, I know I've seen that with Chuck uh, and a couple other people. And I tell you the only thing you have control over is how much you're willing to lose. That's it. You don't have any control over how much money you're going to make. How many times you're going to be right? How many times you're going to be wrong? The only thing you have control over is how much you're going to risk. So for me, this is not a trade that I'd want to take. So this is how you've ruled it out. Uh, and then I didn't even do the oscillator uh, for the wave four pullback um, because we haven't found one yet. We haven't found a trade yet that looks good. And this is what your uh, routine is throughout the day is going through and grading these trades. And that's, this is one of the reasons why I tell a lot of newer student, uh, traders, students that come in where I'm like, well, what are you trading? And you know, they pull up their list and they have like 90 freaking things on their chart. And I'm like, do you even trade all those? Well, no, that, and I'm like, why are you slowing your computer down with that many different things? And there's no way you can be intimate with 17 future symbols and know them, you know, front side to back side, upside, left, right, down, north, south, east, west. You need to know what's going on with that particular thing. And if you don't, it's going to take your money away from you. That uh, it still takes my money away from me. That it's. You know, I am not some genius. Uh, I am human. I make the same stupid mistakes that other people do. And I say stupid, not in a demeaning way. I'm just saying that, you know, we all think that we have the answer or we get into a groove for four or five days and you're kicking ass and you're winning. And it seems like whatever you do is right. And then all of a sudden a day like yesterday and today comes out and no matter what you do is wrong. You know, you go left, it goes right. You go right, it goes left. If you stay in it, it just keeps going deeper negative. If you get uh, out of it, it immediately turns around and goes your way. <laughs> it's today, yesterday and today are the days where you're just like, you know what? I'm going to go clean the garage. I'm going to go mow the lawn. I'm going to go to the gym. Uh, you know, go ride the bike, do whatever. Uh, this is funny. If you look on this fifth wave target, look where we're bouncing off of. This candle came down and touched it. Pretty close to it. And then this one right here is fighting off of it. So, all right, let's go to another time frame. Let's go five minutes. Oh, we already did five. 
Let's do one hour. I personally don't like taking one hour um, Elliott waves because so much crap can happen in an hour. All right, this is a good one. This, uh, this is a good one because it has two support and resistance zones in there. Uh, you have one right above it. This is a good one. All right, so this is one hour ES. So, and we have a crown. Yes, we're gonna be able to do this. Okay, fourth wave. Let's say you isolated already and I haven't isolated. I don't wanna isolate and mess this one up. Actually, you know what, here, let's do this. The one is right here, which you're gonna have. Because of an hour time frame, you have to kind of, um, if you wanna re-isolate, I would have went probably with this high right here or one of these lows right here is where I would have isolated. Um, but isolating off this low right here is what would give you this one right here. So we're gonna keep this one the way that it is because it gives us everything for me to show you what's going on. Uh, and then let's click on roller coaster. Yeah, real, see on the hour, it didn't have, uh, these two were not ones. You, you wouldn't have taken this anyways because there's a support resistance zone right there. And you wouldn't have taken this one because there's a support zone right there. Um, even with this one right now, I wouldn't have taken this roller coaster one because it's in between two support zones and they're just so close. They're three points apart, guys. Uh, there's not a, there's too much risk in there. Now the chances of it bouncing around inside this is pretty high. And look at it, do, 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 do. came out above, came back down, and we'll probably bounce around there some more. So all right. There's your number three right here. There's your number four. So we're gonna go up here and hit the regression trend. And then I, this little box right here, you can drag it around on your chart wherever you want it. I just tuck it away down in here. So I'm gonna Elliott wave and see it, click on it. Click the high of the three, the low of the four. Oh, I didn't do that right. Under three. All right, where am I? I'm dragging this thing wrong. Okay. It's saying not to get long until after right here. Let me draw it one more time. I don't like the way that it looks. Let's go on this lower one right here, this lower one right here. All right, there you go. Extend lines. Okay, what I did instead of this high right here, I took it off the one next to it because it was giving me a weird channel, drop it down and it fits it. The rest of the wave four fits in there. So you don't want to get long according to this channel. This is like number. The first thing you're going to look at is you don't want to get long until around 27, 59, 57. All right. That also co coincides with we're already out of the green. We just touched it with one bar and came back out. You want to be above, the 6-4 moving average, which is that red and the blue, you're above that. So there would be your entry right there. Now, the 9140, this one, thank God, uh, falls down into this. You're going to go up here and you're going to do a fib retracement. But I have it in here as uh, 9140 fib. And Second here. 
we want to go to the high. Let me actually, let me erase that. Let me redo it again. The fourth ended like right here. So I'm gonna go over here and click the zero. And if you look, direct, you touch the top of this right here, you go to the high of that wave three, which is right here. You touch the top of that and you drop it. And if you look, this was a, this was a go. This was one more go signs, okay? If you right click that, screenshot that if you guys want. It is, you can screenshot, those are the numbers. You can uncheck those other boxes and then just leave your zero, 0 0.9, 1.4, and then use red and green on those. Uh, and that'll make life easier for you. And then go, click down here and click save as, and then I save it as W5T uh, 9140 FIB or 9140. I actually can delete that other one off. Okay, so number one, we went down, touched the green, we came out. Okay, that's good. We did the fourth fourth wave pullback channel. We're above that. There's number two that you uh, to go long. We're above the six four moving average. There's three, um, and you don't necessarily have to have that. That's part of bits. Uh, and if I do, turn that on, also part of uh, bits, if you had it, when the cyan crosses over the yellow, that's when you go long. So right there, um, that 2755 range right there would be your long. So all of these things are looking good. Plus now, let me turn off uh, roller coaster bits. So everything is looking good on this trade so far. We've got room for it to get up here. Even though the target is up here, there's plenty of room from here to there. That uh, That's 96 and we're at 55. So I mean, that's 40, 41 points, uh, 160 ticks. That's got plenty of room to breathe is what Paul calls it. So, all right, so we have 535 oscillator. Uh, stochastic needs to pull back or uh, it's crossing over, going over. And if you look right here, where did it cross over at? Right at this one. So not only did it, I don't know if you want to say faked you out and then came back and pulled down and touched because typically when you break through that 6-4 moving average, it's going to come back and retest it before it takes off again. And if you look down here, you don't want to go long until this thing crosses over. And if you look, it technically doesn't cross over until this candle right here. So you can time your strategy of getting in, but this is one more thing in there that you've got your channel, you're above the channel line, you're above the 6-4 moving average, your bias is green, your uh, 535 oscillator uh, that had a nice crown, it didn't you know, get real close to it, it's, it crowned back nice, we're within the 9140, and then your stochastic crossed over too, right on that candle confirming to go long. These are all the signs that go along, guys. And this is why some people can buy an indicator and they'll say, this thing doesn't work. And it's like, yes, it does. But it's like, but did you do these things right here? And the answer 99% of the time is no. I just went or did. And a lot of times it's, they didn't even isolate either um, on it. So this was a good trade right here, like really good trade on it. And we're about running out of time. What else do you guys 
I want to see on here that you want me to do for you. This was a perfect one right here. I'm really glad that we found some crappy ones to show you like what not to take. And then one that's a quality one to take. Uh, now being on a 60 minute channel, you're going to, sometimes you're going to have longer uh, fork wave pullbacks. Um, this one met all the rules. Man, did I put you guys all to sleep or what? Anything you guys want to see? Speak now, forever hold your peace. I'm using a trading view, Dave. I am still grabbing numbers off of um, TradeStation for .d stuff uh, because uh, TradingView does not have .d yet, but it is on my list tomorrow. Uh, TradingView guys don't uh, don't quite understand what I'm talking about when in my emails, so I'm going to have the tech people from TradeStation since they connect with them anyway, so that they've got like a back channel better than mine, um, and have them do it. But the workaround technically is they say create a 24-hour chart. And those candles are based off of uh, intraday data than a daily chart. Uh, that was what the guy told me was the workaround on it. So let's go, we did a one hour, is that right? Yep, there we go. So see how going through these steps, guys, like you need to make it um, like, you're welcome, Dave. Uh, you need to make it part of your checklist. It's like an airplane. You don't just get in the airplane and start it up. You go back, you move the, move the flaps, you make sure it works. Take the tail, you move it around, you check the cables, make sure everything's done. You do the fuel deal where you make sure there's no water in the fuel on both sides of uh, each wing. Uh, you know, you take the yoke, you move it around, uh, you look back, make sure things are moving and turning. Uh, you know, you do a lot of pre-checks before you get into the air. That And that's the same way. Getting into the air is the same way of making one of these trades. You need to have fresh air before you get into the air. And you need to go through that checklist of doing that. These will keep you out of bad trades if you do this. And it doesn't, I don't know how to hook up. He was saying on Forex, I don't even know how to hook up. I don't know if I don't have, I don't have Forex, a Forex broker. So I don't think I can pull it up, uh, but I can easily do this on a Forex. Does anybody know what a Forex symbol is? Uh, I have no idea. Or that, that would be like what USD JPY. Is that right? That would be Forex. There we go. See, look, I still remember a little something from my OTA classes. All right, let's let's just do one real quick for USD JPY. We're going to do 60 minute. I'll show you that Elliott Wave does work on Forex. So we are going to go back to, this is the 15th, 13th. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go somewhere right in here. Really, I should probably go there or go up here, but I'm gonna go a little farther back. Yes, I did. I, uh, I did the whole mastermind thing. Thirteen eight seventy seven is the candle number. All right, this is one hour. That one, let's say isolating from there, that one failed and didn't make it. Now, if somebody did, this one actually did make it, uh, and then since then it's changed it to a ABC correction. 
this one, let's go over here. This one did make it. Uh, I don't know what these move per tick. And you guys don't have to stay if you don't want to on this one. Uh, I'm just going through what makes these. Let's go to a smaller time frame. I, I don't like the hour time frame on those. All right, let's go up here and do a high. Let's do this high right here. That is 10,038. All right. Here was a successful one right here. And we'll run through this one real quick. Let me blow this up so you guys can see it a little bit better. All right. I don't have. Uh, I don't, Paul doesn't do uh, support and resistance zones for this. Um, that would be another class. We don't got enough time for it. But let's just do a channel, fourth wave channel on there. You're welcome, Bill. Have a good night, man. So fourth wave channel, we're going to do the three to the four. We're going to extend it. Oops. Probably should save that as a, okay. So rule number one, we've already painted the three and we painted the four. We did a channel. You don't want to take channel until it's outside or you don't want to take the trade this short until it's outside of that channel. You also want to be below that six, four moving average, which for me is going to, it moved up. So I wouldn't want to take this until somewhere, I want to be out of the green and below the 6.4. So I wouldn't have taken it until right here. That's the clearest one, all right? Now, let's shrink this up a little bit. And then we are gonna go down here. All right, technically, if you look here, there's no green crown on that fourth wave pullback. So that is a negative for me that I don't want to take that pullback. Now you did have bias was uh, on your side. Um, and there, I mean this, I don't know how much that moves per tick or whatever it is. Uh, yes, six, four moving average. Uh, and uh, I honestly, BG, I have no idea, man. I just follow the rules. So I just follow the rules. I don't, uh, I don't know if it's exponential or, simple or I just know red, blue, go long above the blue, short below the red. <laughs> that uh, I remember one time sitting in Bob's class and I made a trade and somebody asked me, they were like, uh, they're like, well, was that the, the Dow or the s and I said, I don't know, whichever the one is ES. <laughs> that was when I first started. I didn't even know the ES was the S and P 500 that, but I just followed what the rules were and it worked. Um, so this one was a good trade out of here. I would have taken it outside of there. It came back and retested it, but you never went negative from the time that you took it. You came down and hit your fifth wave target. Uh, me personally, I run my stop loss when it hits the fifth wave target. I run my stop loss like one tick above the blue because I've seen them so many times touch it and then take back off in one candle. And this one went all the way down to the bottom. Now I will follow this down as it goes and I'll let it stop me out there. Now, could I gotten a little bit more, but look how long this thing went sideways over here going out of there. And my dog's going crazy over here, moving her dog bed around like, Hey, your hour's up. It's time to play. Uh, guys, uh, let me do this one real fast. This one had a crown. So let me do this one real quick. And this kind of gives you an idea if you want to speed through. All right. We have the three and the four hit your, and if you're uh, evaluating your chart like this, your defaults are already set. When you set it one time, it's there until you move it. Okay. Uh, darn it. I do that every time. Extend the lines. Probably should make that a different color. 
So you want to be, here's your channel. You want to be below that 6-4 moving average and outside of the green, which is going to be somewhere right there. Now we're going to go over here and do a fib retracement. And we are going to go 9140. And we are going to go to zero. Hold on, drug the thing wrong. Your wave three was right there. Well, if you look, we violated that. And this was, this got chopped up, chopped up, chopped up, chopped up. And then it eventually made it down there. So for me, wouldn't have taken this one. And your uh, stochastics here, if you look, uh, it went over. I mean, it dropped out, it dropped down and then back up. And I mean, it's all over the freaking board and it didn't go anywhere. You know what I mean? It's like uh, we never crossed over right here it did it did come out right here which that kind of looked like it should have went but it went back up and that's kind of like another you know what i mean before you would have took that if you did this on here that was way too far of a pullback plus look at your bias dots red yellow red yellow 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 red uh now it took off there on red uh and going down so this ruled out that one. So a little bit ago, that other one, you know, was a good one. This one was not. Now it still worked uh, if you, you know, had the patience to sit in it and uh, it didn't really go negative on you if you took it uh, right where you're at. So, but all right, guys, you got to run. Uh, I appreciate you all um, coming and hanging out with me. I know everybody's got uh, busy lives and kids and family and, loved ones and the whole nine yards. Um, I really appreciate all y'all's uh, faith in our company and our indicators and everything that we do for you guys. Um, you know, I, I do these for free every Wednesday uh, for people that already have the indicators and for people that are thinking about it. And for ones that are, you know, stressed out and struggling, man, I, I don't hold nothing against you that you're upset. Um, you know, reach out to me for help. I've never heard from you. So you can't say you tried because nobody reached out to me. I'm here. I'm free. Don't cut you a dime. Uh, and anybody on this list of people, uh, thanks, Dave. I really appreciate And including Dave, that uh, how many people on here have I spent an hour, two hours or more on a private Zoom helping them through stuff that, uh, you know, i I'm very uh, available, let's put it that way. And I've done stuff at one o'clock in the morning for people. I've done it at 4.30 in the morning where I've gotten up early uh, because of time zone differences across the world. And um, I, We are here for you guys. And I mean, we have a whole team of people. You only really see Paul and I, but there's about, I think, nine or 10 of us total. Uh, there's a lot of behind the scenes people that are, you know, making sure that these things are up and running and, uh, you know, I mean, we, uh, trading view does an update or Ninja trader does something you guys don't see in the background, us sending messages all night long to the guy to, you know, figure out, uh, from whatever update they did to make sure that ours still works, uh, and do the work around. I mean, there's people that work around the clock, making sure that these things are running and stuff was going good. So. All right, guys, have a good night. I appreciate everything, and we will see you tomorrow night. Uh, Paul is actually doing the event tomorrow night. Uh, he's going to be getting up at, like, midnight, I think, or 1 o'clock in the morning his time. So he, his eyes may be a little droopy, <laughs> but he'll be here tomorrow night. Uh, I'm going to be on that one also. I believe it starts at 5 p.m. Central Time, 6 Eastern. Uh, 
running it. We may combine that video. Um, I think instead of having two of them a week, I think one is plenty. So, uh, but all right, guys, have a good night. Talk to you later.